Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one, I'm gonna be talking about my review of the Elgu Neptune 3. Now I've had this printer now for about two months and primarily I've always been a resin 3D printer, printing off wargaming miniatures and role-playing miniatures. So that is the kind of experience I'm gonna be coming from. I haven't used an FDM printer in the past beforehand. I had one go at doing it, didn't work out for me. And that's why I've ended up with the Neptune 3. So this review is gonna be from the perspective of a relative 3D printing amateur when it comes to like a filament printer, and also from somebody who's been using a lot of resin 3D printing for wargaming and everything else. So let's get into this review. So first up, let's talk about some of the features and some of the bits that are advertised about the Elgoo Neptune 3 before we get into my thoughts and I guess some of the pros and cons about it. Now, this is advertised as being something you can set up in 10 minutes time. And I've got to say, if you've got some experience in setting these kind of printers up and you've done this in the past, then you could definitely do it in that sort of like 10 minutes time. I think it took me about 15 to 20 minutes. It's literally just in two pieces that you put together and it was an absolute breeze. In the past, I set up an Elgoo Neptune 2S and that took me forever. It took me like an hour. It was really fiddly, it was really difficult. With the Neptune 3, it was incredibly easy just to set up and get going. And one of the features with this, it has the auto bed leveling as well. So you literally press a couple of buttons, follow the instructions, and you are pretty much good to go. All in all, it took me about 20 to 30 minutes to have it ready to print, which I was really, really impressed with. So if you are new to this, like I am in terms of FDM printing, oh, it was such a breeze to get going. Features wise, I've mentioned, obviously that has that auto bed leveling. For me, that's a big win. It means that I don't need to do too much fiddling. You can go in there and fine tune it yourself. And I know some people do really like that, but for somebody who just wants to be able to pretty much get going, that's a big blessing. It also has this flex plate as well, which comes off the really nice large build plate, which means obviously getting your prints off and stuff like that, you kind of just flex it about and it snaps off. A very nice inclusion. And then on the front, you've got this 4.3 inch touchscreen. It's very nice, it's very clear, easy to use. It's responsive as well, I've not had any issues. Even when I've had the printer out in the cold garage, it's still been responsive. I had no issues kind of touching while we're using that screen, so that's a nice win. And it also has a filament runout sensor, which has come in handy quite a few times for me. Mostly because I made a stupid mistake when I first got it and I let the spool unspool a little bit and things got tangled. So it warned me about that and stopped me from having failed prints. So that's been a bit of a print savior. Um, it's a very nice feature to have. Now, one of the really nice things about this printer it has a really nice big build volume. So coming from resin 3D printers, I have an Elgoo Mars 3, absolutely love it. It's great for printing things like this. Terrain prints, obviously, because you can do them in one go rather than having to kind of print them off and slice them or cut them up and then try to stick them together. Print this whole base bit off and then do a second print of this and then they just go together really nicely. So there's no fiddly bits there having to cut it all up. So that's a really nice big win. So that's just a brief feature set and stuff that it comes with. It's currently retailing for $209 at the moment. It is due to go up as well. It's more like the pre-orders and I guess like the, the pre-batches or whatever they're calling it. So it's a nice reasonable price. I got this, it retailed, I think it was about 140 to 150 pounds when I picked it up, which is an absolute killer deal. For that price, it is well and truly worth it. Now, moving on to the print quality. So again, coming from a resin 3D printer perspective, you get some really incredible detail with those. And I did have, obviously, my expectations were set a little bit lower. I didn't expect to get that quality. And to be fair, I'm not gonna be printing off miniatures with this because it's just not gonna do a fantastic job. Some people can do some great stuff with it, Again, coming from that amateur perspective when it comes to filament printers, that's not me. And I still don't think you're gonna to get to that resin standard. But for things like this, again, terrain pieces, larger pieces that are a pain to print off on a resin 3D printer, not necessarily because it's hard to get them all on there, but obviously you've got the cleanup and everything. I think it is well and truly good enough to kind of throw this down on the game table. It's also nice and robust as well, so you can knock it about. I don't have to worry about kind of like snapping or anything like that, but, I think they look fantastic. So I've got a whole host of these kind of like village pieces and I've got a whole load of them in a box at the moment, which I've been printing off and they're just doing some basic paint jobs on it. You can see layer lines. Uh, it's something that's just, I haven't escaped from. So when I did my initial impressions video, some people were saying, you know, you could do a lot more to get rid of those layer lines. I believe them. There's probably a lot more that I can do to get even better quality from this. But even at this quality, again, pretty much plug and play settings, I'm really impressed with the quality that I'm getting off of these. Another thing that I've really got into is these flexible prints. And these kind of blow my mind, the fact that I literally don't need to do any kind of supporting or anything. You just get your file, throw it into Cura, plug it into the printer and hit print. And then you peel them off the print bed, basically like this. Now I have like a raft around them because it stops them from moving around and you just have to kind of peel that off, but that's not a pain. So I've got like these skeleton hands this little skeleton here, 
you know, this little kind of lizard thing and then this skeleton crocodiles. And I'll try and have a lot of these linked down below as well so you can check them out. But literally, you just print them in place and they come off like this and they are fantastic. Now, my son is five, my daughter is two, and they love these. They are having an absolute blast, especially as we lead up to Halloween. I've not had any breakages as well. Now, if I were to print something like this in resin, it would be snapped into a gazillion million pieces. So that, for me, is great. I get some really strong stuff that can print off, larger stuff as well. And honestly, the quality is good enough for me for these toys, for things like the terrain pieces, for anything larger, it's just, I really like it. I'm impressed with it. It's not perfect. You know, if you are going for this and hoping that you're gonna get something that is like rivaling something like the Mars 3, you're just not gonna get it. You need to set your expectations correctly. But for me, I am more than happy for this, especially at the price point. The one thing I will say, and it does surprise me still, that you know, something like this takes about 12 hours to print. And then again, another like 12 hours to print this. Again, I could probably fiddle with the settings more to get that print time down but it can take a long time to print some of these things. Now, I'm not too bothered about that. I'll literally kind of set my printer going, make sure it does all the initial stages, and then I'll just leave it, and then come back to it later, and I can peel it off the printer and stuff like that, so it's not too much of an issue. But if you are somebody who is used to that like fast and furious print time that you can get from a resin 3D printer, just bear that in mind, they're not the fastest things in the world to get off the printer, but still, in the end, you can just walk away and come back later. It's faster than getting something posted to you in most cases anyway. Another great thing is obviously moving away from things like the toys and the train pieces, it's got me thinking more about more functional prints that I can use as well. So recently been playing a lot of Mansions of Madness and it's got loads of cards and tokens and everything. And I printed off all these like box inserts that you can get in there and it, you literally pull the tray out and it has all the cards and the tokens all organized nicely. And stuff like that is an absolute lifesaver. Printing things like regiment trays as well for all my miniatures, that's really nice to be able to do. And kind of mocking some of my own up as well to use with like 15 millimeter wargaming, it's just been a nice thing to have. So more functional prints are possible with this, and obviously they're again possible with your resin 3D printers, but they're just things that I wouldn't mind having in a box. They're relatively easy just to print off, doesn't cost much either, because you know it just seems, in my opinion at least, to cost a little bit less than resin, so I'm having a blast with it. Moving across on to the ease of use of this thing, and it is the closest printer that I've had that is plug and play. Setting up is really easy, and we've already covered that, but literally getting your stuff into Cura, then popping it into that little memory card, and then hitting print. The vast majority of the time, it just does what I want it to. I haven't really had any fails. I don't have to mess around with supports too much. I don't really ever fiddle with the settings. I still do need to do more with that, but I don't have any issues. I've only had, I think, one failed print, and that's the only time that I was fiddling around with the settings and I did something wrong. So I've only had the one failed print out of all of this, so I've been really impressed with it so far. It is definitely the closest I've come to having just a printer that you can buy pretty much off a shelf and start printing it with and not have any issues with. The other nice thing about it as well is you don't really need any harmful chemicals. So obviously with a resin 3D printer, if you're printing something like this, you would probably end up hollowing it out so that way you didn't use up too much resin, otherwise it costs a fortune. And I hate hollowing models out because then you'll get this resin inside of it. You've got to try and clean it out thoroughly. Then you've got to cure the inside. And again, you're using things like alcohol or if you're using water washable resin, then you've got this contaminated water. With this, you literally, you print it and it comes off on that build plate, take the flex plate off and snap it off. And that's it done. You don't really need to do anything else. So ease of actually getting the thing set up and printing with it is up there but then also ease of dealing with the models afterwards is really high. Now again, you could maybe argue that there's more cleanup time on these if you wanted to file them down or sand them down or maybe use some filler to get rid of some of those layer lines. But for me, I'm not bothered with the type of stuff that I'm printing. So it, I'm really happy with the experience of this. It is a really easy to use, user-friendly experience. So yeah, absolutely loving it. And I guess that applies to pretty much all filament printers, but for this, but yeah, for this, Absolutely love it. Moving on to one that people might be interested in, especially with the cost of electricity at the moment, is the power consumption. Now I've obviously have got on the screen here some like the, the amount it's using, and it seems to jump between 50 watts up to 300 watts, depending on what it's doing. Now I expected it to have a lot more power usage during the initial startup, because obviously that's when it's having to heat up the heat bed and heat up the nozzle, but it's, it's kind of random. I, I think it all depends on what it's doing at the time and obviously having how much electricity it's pulling in but you're gonna get anywhere between 50 to 300 watts. It seems to stay closer on average down towards that 50 watts and then it jumps up and spikes up to that 300. 
but just bear that in mind, it's not gonna break the bank, but with the cost of electricity, it's probably something that you do wanna consider because some of these prints, you know, if you are printing off something that's really large, I did a dice tower, for example, and that took, I think it was like 26 hours to print. So actually, even though it might only be consuming, I don't know, on average, about like 100 watts, that can then add up over the period of like that 26 hour print. So it can start to add up in terms of cost in that respect. So just, you know, something to bear in mind. And that's it. There's a lot of stuff that I love about this printer, especially at the price point. And like I said, I was coming from a resin 3D printer perspective. As a war gamer, I wanted something that I could print off a lot of terrain with. And this seemed to be the perfect thing for me. It's a relatively budget printer, but it gives me decent quality and I'm really happy with the results that I've been getting. If anything, you know, there are certain things there that I wish it did give me a little bit better quality, but a lot of that can come down to me having to tweak some of those settings. I know I'm not gonna get rid of layer lines completely, it's just, it's not gonna happen. But things like this kind of Brachiosaurus, for example, you can see them more towards the, the top of like curved surfaces. Again, same thing you'd see on resin, but only if you really, really zoom in and look for it. So that, you know what, I do wish it was slightly better, but then obviously I'm wishing for something that the, the filament printers aren't gonna give me, especially at this budget, and especially with my expertise in it, or lack of expertise. So all in all, if you are somebody who is just looking to get into filament 3D printing, honestly, this is a really good budget printer. It's incredibly easy to set up, and I had like literally no difficulties. I've had no issues with it kind of going wrong since I've had it over these past two months, so definitely worthwhile checking out. If you've already got that resin 3D printer and you want something to print off some of the larger prints like terrain pieces, or if you just want to get into, you know, random skeleton hands, honestly, it is, so, I, I, it's one of my favorite purchases from this year. I've had so much fun with it. It's easy to use. I get some pretty damn good quality prints off. And I don't need to do too much cleanup work afterwards. It's just a really nice, easy experience. So yeah, very happy with this purchase. And obviously you probably picked up there, I did buy this with my own money. Elgu have no idea who I am at the moment, maybe one day, but not at the moment. So this isn't sponsored. It's not, you know, anything that I've been paid for or not been sent it, purchased out of my own little pocket. So that is my review of the Elgu Neptune 3. Honestly, at that $200 price point that seems to be sitting at the moment, it is a fantastic deal, at least in my opinion. I don't have too much frame of reference when it comes to other filament 3D printers, so anybody else who has used this compared to something else that they've maybe used in the past, throw that down in the comments below. We'd be really interested to hear your experience and just share that with everybody else as well who's maybe making a buying decision. Worthwhile checking out, again, like I said, if you are that perspective, but I've had a lot of fun with it. Now, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more content in the future. Obviously, if you've got any questions, throw them down below as well. Obviously, you can head over to my Discord channel as well. You can chat all things 3D printing, painting, and all of that stuff. If you want to support the channel as well, head on over to my Patreon page. It helps me to keep the lights on and also, you know, buy more random printers in the future. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.